So for those of us who have never joined this session, just want to give a sense of what we're working with. We're working with Moodle LMS, okay? Moodle LMS is a learning management system and it allows us to interact with our students in much the same way that we do with face-to-face -face instruction, except we do so virtually. So we can, we can have live sessions, we can, we can, we can, they can engage in assignments, they can, they can do other assessments like quizzes, etc. They can, they can work with each other, work in um, cooperative, um, you, we could use cooperative learning, have them work in groups, etc. But the point is, the only difference is that there's a distance created because it is virtual. So the aim of, of these sessions is quite importantly, to have us you know, develop the kind of competencies we need in order to ensure that we, 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 we maximize the, the use of this tool. We, we, we use the, this tool optimally um, um, to more or less ensure that in all ways possible, we are, we are exposing our learners to quality instruction, okay? So that being said, I, I just want to share some wonderful news. We have one of our lecturers, uh, Mrs. Um, Mrs. Scott, Hannah, who actually took the time off without us asking to develop a manual with, with visuals to help you um, go through the process of using Moodle. Of course, this will be shared with everyone, even our Facebook friends. And I want to thank Hannah for a wonderful job she's doing. If you're on Hannah, bravo, great job. I mean, this is definitely going beyond. Okay, and if she's not on, guys, please tell her that we are thanking her immensely. Okay, so this will be shared with everyone, including our, our participants on Facebook. Okay, so let us go back to our objectives for today. Okay, so the focus, of course, is always adding content to our, our course pages or our subject pages. Okay, and this content specifically we're looking at today is big blue button. Okay. Um, video and not just not just video but video that is used in an effective manner that supports you know um effective instruction learner engagement and of course we're going to be looking at how you create assignments okay then so the first tool we'll be looking at today is this tool called big blue button okay now big blue button is a feature of of a lot of Moodle, Moodle um, installations. Um, the, if, if you are running a Moodle platform, you could always ask your administrator to install it. It is free. It is an open source project and it allows for effective video conferencing. Okay. So it provides you with much of the tools you need for effective instruction, such as a whiteboard, okay, that you could write on, students can annotate, etc. Um, you can share your screen. You have presentation tools, which is, which is kind of one up on, on Zoom because with Big Blue Button, you could actually upload your presentations, okay? And have students interact with them instead, instead of simply sharing your screen, okay? Um, of course, you have, you have the, the back channel tools like the chat and the public notebook and of course, you could also use what we call breakout rooms, which is a way of creating groups online so your students can, can work on activities. Okay, so this is what Big Blue Button is all about. So in our, the first part of our session, we will look at how you create a virtual classroom in Big Blue Button, how you run that classroom, and of course, how you um, use the different features of that classroom for effective instruction. So at this point, I will pause. Do you have any questions about Big Blue Button that you need clarified before we go into demonstration mode? And Big Blue Button replace Zoom coming from the chat? Well, of course, Big Blue Button can replace Zoom. Um, I think the biggest issue with Big Blue Button is that it is an open source project and um, well, well, open source is not getting the type of reputation it, 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 it deserves. Open source is, an, is a way of democratizing access to, to technology. You don't have to pay a whole heap of money for it. It's free. Okay. And actually, the learning management system we're working with right now is open source. So, we, so we're not paying anything for Moodle. 
all we had to have is the expertise in order to install it and run it. And I guess this is the biggest concern. But yes, Big Blue Button can replace Zoom. Okay, so that being said, I am going to, to share um, my screen. Well, it's another computer actually. I'm going to share this other computer, which is something I had to do in order for us to demonstrate Big Blue Button. Okay. So um, this is our sandbox. And I just want you to let me know if you're seeing everything clearly. So you could use a thumbs up. No, sorry, you could use a yes, no icon in the participants list if you're not seeing clearly, because I'm actually projecting another computer to the screen. So Ms. Johnny will indicate if anybody cannot see this thing clearly, um, so that maybe I can make some adjustments. But for now, this is the training sandbox that we have, working, we have been working in in the last few sessions. Okay. Um, notice from, from the last few sessions, we were able to add our welcome okay our announcement forum our general questions chat we were able to start a new section called introduction to moodle lms where we were able to add a file uploading a quiz to moodle we were able to add a video right embedding video in your moodle course and we were able to create a quiz and remember in the last session we create we we uploaded the quiz in two different ways we in in, in the first approach we basically um, created our questions in Moodle. In the second approach, we created our questions in Word and we simply uploaded it, uploaded it to Moodle. So just a review of where we are at. Remember too that this area here, our menu is quite important, right? It helps us navigate, right? Between our participants, our grades and our different sections in the course. So. We're going to begin um, this demonstration by first of all, enabling the feature that will allow us to add this virtual classroom. Now, as usual, when you're using Moodle, in order to add any content, and we must always stress that in order to add any content, we need always to select, okay, the turn editing on function, okay? Now, when we do that, remember, we will see our editing icons up here. So from the drag, the move and drag option to the edit um, option right here, plus the universal editing icon, which is the pencil, okay? Plus we're also going to see this option here to add an activity. So we want to create our virtual classroom for topic two. First of all, we will just go through the process of editing the topic, okay? Um, just like we did in the last few session, sessions. So I'm going to go to editing and select edit topic. Remember always that um, to change the section name here, we must enable the custom option. So this section, will be the section in which I'm going to do all my different video and webinar. So I'll call this using video, okay, in Moodle. Because the webinars are a kind of video. Okay, and I'm just going to write a brief summary of this, just a brief summary of this section. I'm not going to put much. Um, just say in this section, and I'm just going to continue, okay. Um, nothing else to put right now. So I'm going to save this, okay? And there we go. We have our section created. So this section is called using video in Moodle. So now let us look at how we go about creating this virtual classroom using Big Blue Button. Remember guys, in order to add any content um, to our course page, content that supports learner interaction, we must go to the add an activity or resource option. When we have done that, of course, the activity picker comes up. This is called the activity picker. And remember, we have two sets of tools we can use. 
The first one are the activities which support learner engagement, just to remind you. And the second one are resources in which the teacher provides the learners with materials that they can use to support whatever it is they're doing. In this case, we're going to go up to activities. We want to, we're looking for the big blue button option. Now it's right here, big blue button, because remember the activities and, and resources are placed in alphabetical order. So we want to select the big blue button option, okay? And from there, we click add. So we are adding this tool. So this is the first step. When we have done that, the, the editing page for our virtual classroom will appear. Okay, so let's look at the different options we have here. The instance ty type has a number of options. Room activity re recordings, room activity only or recordings only. Now, as it suggests, the first option will allow you to run your webinars, but those webinars will be automatically recorded. The second um, option will simply allow you to run the webinars without recording. And the third option will simply create a repository for all the recordings of previous webinars. So if you want to create a place that students can go to, to find all the webinars that you have done in, in Big Blue Button, you will choose recordings only. Okay, for now, we want to run our webinar and record it at the same time. So we're going to keep this one selected. The next step is to go to our, through our general settings. So I'm going to click on the show more option so we can see all the options in our general settings. The first option is the classroom name. So I'm going to call this um, virtual classroom. You may call it whatever you may. Okay, I guess the, whatever you call it should be based on, on its focus. And then now in my description, I'm going, I'm going to just make it clear that this classroom will um, help um, us work together. I'm just trying to figure out something to say. <laughs> uh, um, no. Well, this classroom will, and I'll just put my three, three dots because I can't think of anything yet, okay? And then now I will click display description on course page because as usual, I always want my learner to understand or know what it is they're getting into even before they click, okay? So thus far, I have selected my instance type. I have named my virtual classroom and I have given it a description, okay? So the next step is to look at activity room settings. You may wish to place a welcome message, okay, for your students. Um, so when they click join the session, that message will pop up. So my welcome message will be welcome to our virtual classroom, okay? And then we have two more options, wait for moderator or session can be recorded. If you select wait for moderator, the students cannot get into the session until you enter the session, okay? So I never actually check that because sometimes the students get a little annoyed, they, they, they're waiting and, and they can't get in, so they might just basically just shut down and, and move on, okay? Um, this one here, session can be recorded, well, you decide whether you want to select that because when you do that, it means that the sessions will be recorded, okay? The next option is the record settings. Notice it's empty. So recording is whatever, whenever you record, the settings are automatic. But the important section is really here, the participants, okay? So you can add participants individually to the session, okay? Or you can just leave it by default as all users enrolled. What does that mean? If you leave it by default, all users enrolled, it will, that session will basically be opened up to anybody in that course, to everybody who is part of the course, okay? So if you are going to run a specific session for students who may need remediation, it makes more sense to go into here, select user and click add, 
okay? And you basically find the selected user. Now I have no users there, so nothing is coming up, okay? Because I have nobody enrolled in this course. But if I did, you would see a list of users that you would select from. Okay, and sometimes, you know, you want to have those one-on-one -on -one session with students. So this is quite an effective way to go. So I'm going to leave that at default, all users enrolled. Okay, and then now we're going to go down to the participants list. So all users enrolled are viewers. That is important. You have two options. You could make them, you could make the, you could make them a moderator or a viewer. A moderator will be able to manipulate the tools in Big Blue Button while the webinar is going on. A viewer can only do so with permission of the moderator. Now, sometimes you have more than one moderator, okay, in the session, like more than one of you um, are doing the course. So you might, you might want to um, basically go to user and add that individual, okay, as a moderator, okay? So this is the participants here. The, so this is how we organize our participants. The next step is the scheduling of the session. This is quite straightforward. You enable, okay, the date that they can join the session. You set your date, whether it's April 3rd, 4th, 5th, and the time, and you enable when the session closes, okay? Before and after that time, nobody can access this. So if your virtual classroom is going to be a recurring classroom, the idea is do not enable any one of these, okay? But if that session is simply a one-off session that you don't want anybody to enter afterwards, then you enable the join date and time and the close date and time, okay? So the other options, um, module settings, um, not really critical right now, but restrict access may be critical because you might want to give certain groups access, certain students access, okay? And so after you have done all of those things that we just went through, the next step is simply to save and return to your course. Now, I know I went through a lot here, so I'm going to pause and allow for any questions um, anybody want, would, would like me to just go back to a certain feature or something I did, um, please, this is your time to let us know. Royston, can you change the schedule that you insert anytime, even during your session? Yes, you can, you can change it anytime. Okay, if you're not sure what time the session, we, we will, how much time does it, you will need to run the session, I would advise you not to enable the closed, the, 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 the closed um, feature, okay? But you can go back to your page afterwards and more or less change your scheduling again. Okay, guys, so we good? Any questions about that? No, but you. we have another question on Facebook. Yes. Go ahead. Um, somebody asked, um, where is the record installed? When it's recording automatically. Yes. Okay, good. The recording is stored in the virtual classroom, and, and I will demonstrate it in a minute. And of course, because we selected activity and recordings, the recordings are done automatically. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah, I have um, a comment on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. um, somebody says, "Good day, all. How practical do you think it? Um, do you think this style of learning is for lower primary, economically challenged students? I see it more appropriate for tertiary learning and higher education school forums." Just a comment. Okay, um, not going to go too, too, too deep into that, but what I want to say, and I guess that's an issue I had, I've been having for a while, talking to different people at the ministry, et cetera. Um, it's really the customization of the tool that is important. 
Moodle is an open-ended tool, which means that we can customize it to suit any type of learner, any type of learner. Okay, and if we're talking about maybe the virtual classroom, again, it's really about the choices of the tools we choose, um, we use um, in that process. Okay, um, so, so, so basically, it's a learning management system, and it's really about the customization, the administration of it. And I guess that is where we kind of lack in St. Lucia. We don't have enough people who can actually work on the back end of Moodle. But, but this is what this effort is all about. My hope is that after we've been exposed to a tool like this, we decide to take it one step further, look at how we can work with the back end, look, because we'll need people to work as developers. And of course, we're going to need people who just focus on, on, on instruction. Okay, so hoping that this can start not a revolution, but a movement, okay, where we can own our own LMS and own our data instead of putting students' data on third party LMSs and we're not even sure who has access to the data and what they're using the data for. Okay, then. Um, so, that being said, I want to demonstrate the use of the virtual classroom. Okay. Is somebody asking a question? No? Okay, good. So now that our, our virtual classroom has been set, I'm going to turn off editing. So we get a sense of basically what this looks like on a finished page. Another thing I'm going to do, I am going to switch my role to that of student so we can get a sense of what the student sees when he or she enters the virtual classroom. So I'm going to scroll down right now and I'm going to click on the virtual classroom. Okay. So when this is clicked, of, of course, you get the name of the classroom, the description, which I did never finished. Okay. And if the virtual classroom is, is open, okay, the students will be told that the conference room is ready and you can join now. Notice also there's a join session button. And after that, there is something saying recordings. What this means is that all recordings will show right here, okay, when they are done. So the student, all the student needs to do is simply click join session, okay, and the big blue button session will begin. So just like in Zoom, you are asked to join audio. Okay? Now, because I don't want any feedback, I'm not going to join with my microphone. I'm just going to listen only, and this is simply for the purpose of demonstration. But um, obviously, the student and the teacher will use this option. Okay? You also have the option of joining using your phone. So it means that this is very mobile compatible, mobile friendly as well. So I'm going to click just listen only because I don't want to create any feedback. Okay, and of course the system will connect. Okay, so let us look at this interface right, right here. Okay, of course we can collapse a number of the panels we see here. We have our messages panel, we have our users, our notes. and This is one of my favorite features, the shared notes, and we will talk about that in a while. We have our public chat, okay, so that as our participants um, type or share, of, of course, we get to see what they're thinking and what they're saying, okay? So obviously I can clear the chat, I can start a new chat, etc. okay? So also, if we look to the right, this is where all our magic happens. This is our whiteboard, our blackboard, whatever, it, whatever you want to call it, okay? So, let me demonstrate a few features that Zoom doesn't have. I'm not trying to put down Zoom. I love Zoom. This is what I'm using right now for, for, the, for, the, for the SALCC end of this webinar. Okay, but I'm going to show you a, a, a few features that are in Zoom and some that are not a part of Zoom. Okay, so let's, first of all, let me just close the public chat for now. Okay, let's look at this here, shared notes. So could you imagine that throughout the process, okay, our students or somebody can actually begin to add notes right here, okay? They can type in notes, 
okay? And add them right here. So this becomes a shared notebook for everybody in the session. And this is downloadable. So after the session is done, okay, whether you have a moderator, whether you have a student responsible for, for taking notes, or all students can add to this, okay? Um, so you can actually download this thing so that students get additional support, okay? For what it is they're learning, okay? So I, I really love this feature. And this feature allows you to format the notes much, much like you would do with a Word document, etc. Okay, so I think this is one of my favorite features of Big Blue Button. Okay, so after the session is done, of course, everybody gets access to those notes. So this is my favorite, one of my favorite tools. It means also that as you go along, okay, you um, students can make a reference to the notes. So you, the instructor, can actually prepare those notes in advance, okay, and have students make reference to the notes. Okay, as you go through the session, which is quite more beneficial, be beneficial than simply sharing a file with the students. Okay, so this is one of, like I said, this is one of my favorite elements of, of, of Big Blue Button. Okay, so let me just close this shared notes. And of course, if I open it, the notes, of course, will remain. They do not, they do not disappear. Okay, okay. So now let us look at our our whiteboard, our, 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 the screen we use to share everything. Okay, notice here, we have an indication of, of course, um, we can actually toggle our users. So when we click here, we can close this panel, right? When we click back, we can open it up. Okay, so you, you actually get to use the entire space. Okay, so let me just toggle back. Okay, so, if we go down here, this plus button allows you to do a number of things. Okay, just like Big Blue Button has a poll that you could use, just like, sorry, Zoom has a poll that you could use, Big Blue Button also has this polling option. Okay, you can actually go right here, click, and you could add a poll quite easily. Okay, so I could add a yes, no poll. Okay, I can type in what, what I want them to say. So basically I can publish my poll and, and say, okay, I'm asking you a question. Do you agree, agree or disagree with this statement? Okay, students respond. And basically you see the responses right here. Now this is unlike Zoom, where you have to go to your Zoom setup in um, online to basically set up your polls. Okay, but you can set this thing right here in, in the middle of during a session, basically. Okay? All right, the other option is upload a presentation. And I love this feature because whereas in Zoom, we, and I have to keep using Zoom as a reference point because Zoom is what we know. Zoom is the established um, webinar software. Okay? Whereas in Zoom, in order to share a presentation, we must share our screen. Um, Big Blue Button allows us to upload it. Okay, so I, I can just click here to find the, pre the, the presentation that I want. Okay, so let me see, do I have anything here that I, that I, that I want to share? Okay, um, so I'll just share this. I don't know what it is. I hope it's not anything that's <laughs> going to give away anything. Okay, so I'm going to share this, it's right here, and I'm going to select the option to upload. Okay, so, when the file is uploaded, it will open up in big blue button. Okay, it's, con it's converting the file right now. Okay. So after it is converted and uploaded, okay, so this is what we have here right now. Notice that we can manipulate this presentation from our big blue button screen. Okay. We can advance slides and everything. Okay, which is very different from Zoom, where you have to do that on your computer because you're sharing the screen basically. Okay, but we can do that from the big blue button window. Okay, so we're going back to the actions. We can also share external video. Okay, which means 
that we can type in a video URL. Okay, and I'm going to find, uh, well, um, I don't have any video URL right now, but we can actually paste the video URL right here. Okay, and we can just share it and our users will have access to it. So let me just go to YouTube quickly. Okay, let me find a video. I'm just going to choose something that maybe can help me here. Okay, so, all right. So let's just take coding music. I don't know what it is. Um, this is contrary to my advice to always preview what you're sharing. But now I can actually go to my, go here, paste this in, and I can share the video, okay? And this video will be played and shared to everybody who is part of the webinar. And again, this is different from Zoom where you need to just put the link in the chat because it's very difficult to share video across, right? The webinar platform, okay? And of course, um, one, of, one of the things, does somebody have a question I'm hearing? Okay, good. So we're good. So one of the, one of the, the things that, that is quite important is that um, um, it's, it's way easier to share those, re, those resources because you're working within, okay? You're working within the platform and you're not working from your computer and into the platform. Okay, so I'm going to pause here for a while. Let me listen to any questions or suggestions that people may have. Then can I ask you to just do the process again, how you went to YouTube and brought it across? Okay, we will do. So let me just take the other questions before I demonstrate that. Any other questions? Yeah? The blue button be used outside of the Moodle platform? Oh, yes, it can. Um, you can actually go to the big blue button website and use it. Um, but the, the value of using it in Moodle is that you get, um, you know that the persons who connect are actually people you are allowed to connect because they are part of your, they are your participants in your course. But yes, it can be used outside of the platform. Um, before I demonstrate for, for, for boots, let me just go to big blue button so you can actually see it. Okay, um, it can be used right from, from here. It can be used from here. Signal a little time to load. Um, but, and it's actually free for teachers, schools, and developers, basically. So you could use it right from this website. My only advice to you, if you're gonna use it from the website, um, you have to be mindful again when it comes to sharing information on your students, etc. It is safer to use it within Moodle um, because you, you, you are authenticating your, your, your learners right from there. I see Cecil had his hand up. Boots, I haven't forgotten you. <laughs> um, yes, Cecil? Okay. So I'm in some trouble with my, it's a sort of thing sticking a little bit. Um, Ronson, I want to know, mm -hmm. when you, in terms of uploading a presentation, are you limited to file format? Because you did a PDF and also um, for the video, you put in the URL, but does it have restrictions on video formats also? Well, um, first question, the file formats, the accepted file formats are the C, uh, uh, PDF, PowerPoint and any derivation of those. It, it, it does Word as well, Excel, um, any of those files, okay? Um, with the video, okay, as long as you, you, you're using a URL, it has no restrictions on the video format, as long as, you, as, long as that video can be streamed across, okay? Okay, thanks. Okay, any other question before I answer Boots? Boots, I haven't forgotten you. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, someone asked, as you're there, Royston, should we click on start recording? I guess if you're... Right. Okay, yes. So, good question. I did not start recording, but yeah, you should click on start recording. Um, um, activate, choosing the option for activity and recording actually allows, um, activates this button 
that you will decide whether or not you you decide whether or not you want to record. So yes, I sh I I would have to click on start recording, and I'll do it now so that we can see whether recording ends up. Okay. Another question: Can you annotate yes. presentation? Yes, you can annotate. Um, students have the option of annotating. I'm actually looking for the option right now in tools. Okay, see it right there. So I can use the pencil tool and I can go and write there, right there on the presentation. I'm not very good at using this. I, for the people who were in the last session I did on Zoom. <laughs> right, so here we go. Yes, you, so you can annotate it and students can annotate it. Any other question? Is there a time limit, limit because Zoom is only allowing 40 minutes? Right, there is no time limit on Big Blue Button. It's an open source project. It's free. It has very few restrictions, okay? So you do not need to pay for it and there is no time limit. Next question. Any How questions on Facebook? Phone? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Royston, or you wait for Facebook? No, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Okay. Um, how about sending a link of the recording to those students who are not able to attend the webinar? How is it done? Well, they access it, they can access it directly through Moodle or you can download the recording and just drop it in um, a shared drive and send it to them. Okay, right. I see this is generating a lot of interest. Any questions on, on, on Facebook, Gavin? Any questions on Facebook, Gavin? No? I have one more. Go ahead. Uh -huh. If I added participants to my BBB presentation outside of Moodle, would their contact information be visible publicly? Okay, and, and that is where I need everybody to be a, a, a little careful. Eh? If you go outside and you add content, you add information, naturally, all, all of those tools have a privacy policy. My biggest concern is not the privacy policy, is basically what they can, how they can use your data, okay? I am not a, fa a fan of placing students' data in third-party tools, okay? That is just my, my orientation. I do a lot of digital literacy training around the world, not just in St. Lucia. And I can tell you that's one thing I stress, that we must read the fine print and know what is happening to the data we put in, in this. Okay? Um, that's why it is way better, makes way more sense to run Big Blue Button through the Moodle platform. But if you are running Big Blue Button um, through the website, the point is, um, be very careful that you do not give too much intimate data on students, like dates of birth and stuff like that. Okay? Um, I don't know if our Facebook people are still on. So, Gavin, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Um, somebody was asking whether um, you can use only PowerPoint or any other document format. Well, I guess that was answered earlier. Any other document format can be used, and I can demonstrate. I can, plus, Boots I haven't forgotten you. I can add and upload um, something else, I guess. Um, let me see what I can use. Let me use a PDF. Do I have any PDFs there? Or do I really have to, <laughs> do I really have to, to do that? Let me see. Let, let's try this here. Honestly, I don't know what this is, so I hope it's nothing incriminating. <laughs> okay, so, right, so let me just remove this one, right? Let me upload this one. Okay, let me upload it. And, right, so, And here it is, this, this one is a PDF, okay? I don't remember where I got this from. That has a lot to do with, well, instruction. Okay, so Boots, not forgetting you, let me quickly demonstrate how we went about adding that external video. One I, more on Facebook, Mr. Okay. Emmanuel. Go ahead. Uh -huh. um, can it upload interactive videos that were created in Moodle? Okay. Um, you won't be able, you can upload the video, but you won't get that interactivity. Okay, I don't think any tool allows that, that level of interactivity. Okay, 
but you can upload the video and the video can be, be played basically. Okay. So Boots, here we go. No, right, um, before you go, that's mm -hmm. Boots again. Yes. Right, and before, just a little question on how you as facilitator, mm -hmm. um, what did you do to keep you reminding you that you have to answer me? Because there have been so many questions. <laughs> Your interaction with us, is there a particular thing that you noted and it's there reminding you that you have to deal with Boots? But Boots, when you're doing this thing for, for 29 years, and I don't want to give, give away my age, <laughs> It becomes automatic that you don't forget anything a student asks you. Because, um, so I didn't do anything special. I, I love the question, but it just reminds me of how, how long I've been teaching. <laughs> but thanks for that. <laughs> so Boots, yes, to answer you now. So I go back, I'm going back to actions, um, share external video, okay? And I, and I went to YouTube, I, let me just go back to YouTube. Okay, and again, I'm going to select anything um, which is against the major principle of, hmm, yeah. Um, so I'm going to just select this. I'm going to copy it. There's a URL right here. And I'm going to go back to big blue button. I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, and select share video. Okay, and the video is shared. Okay, so um, this is how it was done. So just to recap, we can, for in big blue button, we can share our, our videos, PowerPoints, polls. We can, all, we, all, we can also share our screen. We do have the option to share our screen. Don't, don't think we don't. Okay, we do have the option to share our screen. So I can click here on share screen. Okay, and I do have the option of sharing our sharing my screen, so I can actually share this here. Okay, right, and when I do that, okay, it will show me the screen that I am sharing. Okay, so you can share your screen, you can share your video, which I'm not going to share right now, <laughs> but you can share your video as well. Okay, um, so and of course, you have all the tools that you can use from, from the tool that, this tool, I love this tool because it allows you to more or less give students a sense of where you are in the presentation by, you know, you can annotate, you can add text to, your, to this. I, I can add text here. I can actually add text here and say, this is very important. Okay, so I can actually add text here right, to anything that I'm doing. And I, of course, we can give students the opportunity to do that as well. So you could also hand that, hand the, the control over to the student so that they can, they can type, label, annotate, a diagram, a video, whatever it is that you have placed online, okay, for them to share. Okay, so um, also we have to, just let me go back to um, some of the, the other features that are very important, okay, um, we can also, like I said earlier, have a shared notes area, okay? We do have the public chat, okay? We do get a sense of who our users are, okay? And it does allow us to create break rooms, but apparently I can't right now because I only have one user, okay, um, in the session. It also allows me to, to turn on the multi-user whiteboard, meaning that all my students can come on at different points here and add things, say things, whatever it is, okay? And to me, that is also a very interesting tool, okay? So um, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to stop the recording of this big blue button session, okay? And I am going to exit the session by going to the expand buttons right here, and I'm going to end it. I'm going to click end meeting to end the session. So it asks me whether I want to, I say yes. Of course I give feedback, I'm giving big blue button five out of five, because it's an excellent tool and it is free, okay? And so now we go back to our classroom, okay? And notice that the session has ended. I will refresh 
you won't see the recording yet. The recording will take a few minutes to, to render. And um, maybe the next time we go back to the big blue button option, um, we will see the option that will allow us to access the recording. Okay. So guys, this is Mr. big blue button for now. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, someone wants to know whether you can do live, whether you can go live with big blue button as you do with Zoom. Yes, that is the premise of big blue button that you can go live with big blue button in much the same way that you do with Zoom. Okay. Right. So, yes, that is the major premise of big blue button. Any other questions about that? Um, is the recording just the audio? No, the recording is both audio and video. Okay. Um, another question in the chat. Someone said they found it difficult to use the mouse or pad to write or draw with the pencil, as you demonstrated. Um, so if there's a way around that, does it require practice or is there a special pencil or pen that we can use to write? Well, there are pencils or pens that you could buy if you have a touch screen. Um, com if you have a touch screen, um, laptop um, but it does require practice my advice to you instead of using the pen or pencil feature to write use the text feature and just type um, so that will that will help you avoid that kind of tedious difficult process of putting something on okay any other questions Rajstan, i have a particular question um Mm -hmm. But my drama classes, I'm doing two drama classes. Um, they are both in practical um, development of, of presentation pieces right now. Mm -hmm. And now I, that I will go on to online, okay, I'm turning one of them into them developing a radio play mm -hmm. instead of the normal or live on stage performance. Mm -hmm. um, so our normal classroom session would have been the typical um, drama workshop, working with the script with characters and reading the script and so on. Yes. And we use the big blue button for that kind of rehearsal. Of course, definitely. Okay. And you could even use it, go one step further and use it to record. And to record the, it, yeah. Yeah, and to record it. It's actually yeah. a multifaceted faceted tool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. That is what is opening nice. up to me right now you know that this is an excellent tool for still doing the practical drama class right but mostly as an audio development characters uh, but developing you, an audio script you could do it with video as well because remember this is mobile compatible guys so any cell phone camera will stream very good video for you on big blue button okay okay because the students yeah. can access it from their phone as well they don't have to be at a laptop with a webcam and everything they can use it right there from their phones and we've okay. done it and it works excellently. Thanks. Okay. No problem. Any other questions? Facebook? Yes. Yes, go ahead, Krisa. Mr. Gordon is asking, is SALCC collaborating with other colleges of the region for a joint approach and harmonization of the LMSs? Who is that Mr. Gordon now? I <laughs> have to be refer. That's an excellent question. And I think that is more of a <laughs> comment than a question. And it's a suggestion more than a question. And I appreciate that. Definitely, I think um, that should be the approach that we should have that kind of harmonization. Um, well, um, reaching out is the first step in this process. And we hope in that, I mean, the colleges and, and the education systems in the, in the OECS can come together and decide on one approach that can help everybody out. Okay, so I, I definitely take that suggestion. It was more of a suggestion than a question. And I definitely Quincy is listening in. Yes, and I, I hope that they will support us in that process. Yes. So, any other questions before we move on? Um, uh, Mr. E, we have yes. a few. Um, yes. Somebody asked, what about the share screen option next to the camera? How mm. does this function work? A second one, can you use a graphic tablet with this? And is Canvas infrastructure an open source tool similar to Moodle? That's three yeah. separate questions. Wow. The boy, that's three separate questions. So give me question one first. The, the first one, sorry, is what about the share screen option next to the camera? 
Uh, how does this work? How does that function uh, work? Okay. So that function works. I'm going to go back to this session, right? I'm going to go back to this session. Let me just, okay. I'm going to join this session once again. Okay. I'm going to join the session once again. Let's wait for it to start up so I can demonstrate that. Okay. So let me just, just listen only. I'm not going to use the mic. Okay, it's just taking a little time, but we're going to get there. Okay, so the share screen option works in much the same way that it does with Zoom and, and Hangouts and those other tools. All you need to do, you click on share your screen and you have an option of sharing your entire screen, sharing an application window or sharing a tab in Chrome. I love that find that third option, just sharing a tab in Chrome. Okay, so people don't have to see everything you're looking at. But I'll select application window and I'll just select a simple one, click on it and share. And that is basically how I share my screen. Now, here is, here is what I really love about sharing the screen. For those of us who have used Zoom before, when you share your screen, you're not sure if people see in your screen. You realize that, right? And you have to ask people, are you seeing my screen? Because you're not seeing what you're sharing, okay? With, with um, Big Blue Button, you actually see what you are sharing. And that, to me, just makes a huge, huge difference, okay? So to stop the sharing, all I have to do is click Stop Sharing, okay? And I'm going to now, right? Just end this, okay? And I'm going to give this again a five out of five because I'm very biased. Um, <laughs> and right, so I'm going to end the session. So the recordings are not there yet, but they will be sure showing up soon. So that was the first question. Second question. Second question is, um, can you use a graphic tablet with the with big blue button? Anything you can connect to your device and it works can work with Big Blue Button. So you could connect extra cameras, you could do all of those things. Third question. Okay. Um, is Canvas infrastructure an open source tool similar to Moodle? Yeah, well, it's an open source tool works basically based on the same principles as, as Moodle. Yes, it is. Um, it is not something I've really delved into that much. I must say I've been using Moodle from the time it started, which was um, 2007, I think. Yeah. So um, forgive me if, if this is where my bias lies. <laughs> Any other questions? Does, does the Sorry. What? Does the application window work with all applications all applications all applications yes one more question mm -hmm. how do the bandwidth requirements for these platforms compare to zoom well definitely um both zoom and the blue button once you are using video it does take a toll on your bandwidth that's why we always suggest to our students please do not share your video because if you have 30 students on and everybody sharing their video. Um, imagine the type of packets you're uploading, okay? Um, so we try to avoid that. So I, so I would say they are similar. They are definitely similar. Um, the advantage of Zoom is that because you have a dedicated account, um, well, you might get, when it comes to, um, there is this concept, well, I don't wanna get too technical. I've been warned about getting too technical. There's something called latency. Okay, and the higher your latency, the, 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 the slower your video and your streaming. Um, with, with Zoom, because you have dedicated accounts, then your, the latency is better controlled. But that doesn't take away from, that is just not enough to take away from the effectiveness of an open source free platform that everybody can use. Any other questions? Okay, I'm no, not hearing it. Okay, we're good. All right, wonderful. So, um, 
this is this is big blue button guys and just want to stress again that it is actually an excellent tool um zoom can potentially be expensive and we have to look at it within the context of of what we can afford and do in the caribbean zoom comes with a recurring license so it means you must pay either yearly or monthly okay the average educational license for for zoom which would require every single user to have that to have to be licensed on that would if you have like 30 teachers in a school you're talking about 3000 us for the year okay which is a phenomenal amount of expenditure given what our schools especially primary secondary schools have when it comes to budgets okay if you have more than that number of teachers you go higher and higher and higher okay um with big blue button it's open source it's free and your school or your ministry can actually just more or less create a big blue button server um whether it be um in the cloud or or or, or, or within their own physical confines to host to host everything you're doing with big blue button okay so there is a possibility here and remember just like zoom it is mobile friendly you could use it from your phone and everywhere else and and if you have if you're running big blue button through Moodle, etc there is less risk of being like you know the you know the zoom bombing that is taking place right now people just jumping in and and sharing pornographic content etc because you're running these things through your lms it is harder for people to access it because they must be authenticated on your lms first